Hi, and welcome to LB Zero Fox India Norwegian Adventures. I'm Morton, LB Zero Fox India. And as you can see over there, this video is sponsored by AliExpress. Because AliExpress contacted me a little while ago and wanted to know if I'd like some money to shop on their marketplace and find some stuff to review that is probably good for you, or might not be. Because that's my mission on this channel, to find the gems among the jungle of bad products. And if you don't know what AliExpress is, it's an online marketplace that has everything. And by everything, I actually mean everything. But uh, for me, AliExpress is mostly interesting when it comes to ham radio and ham radio goods. Because there's a lot of ham radio goods in AliExpress. Some are really bad, some are really good, some are cheap, some are expensive, and most are somewhere in between. But this is today's little product, so let's open up the bag and see what we got here. First of all, we have two ring connectors. We'll get back to those later on. And then we have this board. And this is the new mini ATDP adapter board, long line and fee feed GP positive V inverted V dipole shortwave antenna. That's a mouthful. But what does it really is? It's, it's a dipole center. And um, it's made on a PCB. It's made by Antuner, the company that makes those little QRP and QRO portable tuners. And by the looks of it, at least as far as I can see now, it's, it seems to be pretty good quality. But let's see what we got here. Well, we got the PCB. And as you can see, there is a big trace here. That's the ground of the antenna. And there is a smaller trace going here which is the positive side of the antenna. There are two rings here to hang the antenna from a rope or similar. And there's an SO239 here. And then you have two, two pads here to connect the, uh, or you actually have four pads. But um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use uh, one of them for, for the antenna legs and uh, the other one is stretch relief. And as you can see here, there's a there's a wire going from the center of the SO239 to the pad on the positive side. And that's the only bad first impression I've got out of this. This seems to be soldered by someone who has never touched a soldering iron before. Um, it's not a very good job, but it looks like it, it'll work for now. But I'm guessing at some point I will need to replace this wire. And I'm actually a little bit surprised though because from what I could see on the website, this is a kit, but it came fully assembled as you can see. So that's the overview of the board. There's not really much more to say on the board. It looks to be of really good quality. I've tried to unscrew these rings and they're actually tightened so hard that I'm afraid to break something if I unscrew them. So I'm gonna leave them like they are. I have no purpose on, on unscrewing those. And then you have the two ring terminals. What is missing here though, is a way of hooking up the ring terminals to the board here. But as you can see, and you probably noticed, I've come prepared, so I got some screws here and uh, and some nuts here, some bolts and nuts just to, to put this together. So um, what do you say? How about we warm up the soldering iron and get some wire on these ring terminals and try to assemble this. And for wires, I got some high visibility yellow silicone wire here. I bought this this wire on AliExpress. I haven't tested it before. So uh, this will be the first time I actually remove the insulation on it and see how good it is or not good it is. But it was cheap. I'll leave a link down below to this. And while we're, while we're talking about links though, uh, there's a link to this board down below as well. And there are some discount codes over there. Look at that. I actually managed to say discount code correctly this time. Discount code, discount code. I guess my English isn't as bad as I think it is. Anyhow, let's warm up the soldering iron and um, get some ring terminals on the ends here and um, make this an antenna. And there's actually one more thing to do before I, uh, I solder the wire. Because if you look at the ring terminal here, it's kind of large with the the insulation here for the board 
So I'm going to remove the plastic piece here. And then we're going to add some heat shrink instead. Just so it, it actually fits better. So let's remove that one. And this one. And I'm just going to find some heat shrink in my drawer and I'll be right back in what for you will seem like just a short second. And I got some heat shrink here. So let's cut this into a couple of small pieces. We don't need a lot. But we need it to stick on the desk actually. Let's do it like this. And I'm guessing the soldering iron is hot now. So uh, let's get the helping hands up. I like using helping hands. I find it's easier to solder when I use helping hands. But um, you do it the way you like to do it, though. I'm not going to force you one way or another. And if you hear someone talking in the background, it's just my teenage daughter that's on the phone. So um, I'm sorry about that. But uh, if you have teenage daughters yourself, you know how it is. And I did that outside the screen. But this wire actually looks pretty good. And let's remember to actually put the heat shrink on first. It's too bad if we should forget that. Let's just arrange this so this is pretty halfway good. And what you're going to see now is I see that I'm partly out of frame as well. So let's keep this in frame for you. Um, what I got to do now is actually show you a lesson in bad soldering. But uh, if you're new to this hobby, don't worry about that. A solder job doesn't always need to be beautiful. It just needs to be working properly. So let's clean this off. And you've probably seen it before, but my workspace is just really, really tiny. So let's put some solder on the iron and start heating up here. Just leave a good blob of solder. I think we're pretty good now. You've seen me solder before and it's not always beautiful, but it's almost always functional. So we're going to slide the heat shrink over here. And we're going to put this to the side and just shrink it in a little while. Then it's time to do the other one. Let's remove the insulation here. And a pair of good strippers is always good to have handy when you're in this hobby. Let's do this the same way. Let's attach the ring terminal. Slide the heat shrink on. Hopefully we have the right amount of heat shrink here, but we'll make it work nonetheless. And the observant among you might have noticed that I've done this and not the smartest way. We'll get back to this that later on. Get some solder on here, heat it up, and just fill it with solder. Let it suck through. There we go. Quickest soldering job ever. Okay. What I'm going to do now is get the heat gun and shrink this down. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. That's one.
and that's two. And before we go to why this is stupid, we're going to take a closer look at the board and actually see that we have continuity between the negative and the positive side and the connector here. So let's grab a multimeter and check that. So we have the multimeter set to continuity and we're going to probe the center here. And the center pin should be this one. Let's check it out. Yep, yeah, that beeps. It beeps here, it beeps here does not beep here. That's good. Let's check the other connection. And we got connection from the outer side of the SO plug to the ground side of the antenna. And we got no short the other way. It's always smart to check that when you uh, when you're building an antenna. And now what was the mistake I did? Um I could ask you to leave a comment down below, but I have no way of checking if you did that now or later on. But feel free to leave a comment down below nonetheless on this. But the mistake is, it's kind of hard to thread it through here with the ring terminal. So we got to thread it through the other side. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here. Let's, first of all, let's untangle this. Then we're going to I'm going to untangle the wire and um, I'll see you uh, when I've done that and we'll do it the right way. So we got the end of the wire here. So let's flip it through here and just pull it through all the way. There we go. So let's attach the screw though. Let's do a screw. See if we can get this going the right way though and, and look nice and work the way it's supposed to. It's a little bit fiddly, but a lot of stuff in this hobby is a little bit fiddly. And you could have, of course, said I could have used a shorter screw. And yeah, I could have, but I didn't have one. Let's put that one in, a spacer, and then a nut. Let's just tighten this down and see if it works. If not, we'll find another way to do it. Let's use a pair of needle nose pliers here and just tighten it, it until it's tight and good. I might need a screwdriver on the other side here. see how tight we can get it. We actually need to get it a little bit tighter. We should be good now. Let's check for continuity. And yes, we have continuity, so we're good on that side. 
Okay, let's repeat this on the other side. Um, I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to show you the finished part and we'll discuss this antenna when it's finished. And there we go. One finished new mini ATDP adapter board, long line and fed, sorry, long line and feed GP positive V inverted V dipole shortwave antenna. Whew, still a mouthful. But actually, um, just to be serious, this little uh, ATDP adapter board, as they call it, or the uh, the dipole center from Antuner uh, that I got off of AliExpress, um, it's really good, as far as I can see. I like it. I'm going to take it out this weekend, and I'm going to test it with a new mast I'm waiting for, the Lil Dude by uh, Ham Radio Dude. I think this little 20 meter dipole and that six meter mass is going to be a killer combo. Um, the only thing that's not really good here is actually this little connection here between the center and um, and the pad here. I would have preferred to have a better soldering job here, perhaps a better kind of wire, but that's something most hams can fix themselves. But to be honest though, for $5.89 at the time of recording this video, this is a great deal, to be honest. It's it's cheap, it's durable, and um, it's just a fun product, actually. And I use dipoles way too little, so I'm looking forward to testing this. Um, if you want to get this, there are some discount codes for AliExpress over here. Um, and to be honest, I like it. There's uh, an affiliate link down below if you want to get it. doesn't cost you anything more, but a little bit of the money goes to me and helps me run this channel. Speaking about that, um, there are some ways to support the channel financially down below. And if you want to see this antenna in use in one of my next upcoming videos, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also hit that thumbs up button. I'd really like that. Leave a comment. Say anything you'd like. Um, I can take it all. But um, I might not be friendly if you're not friendly back. So that's my final tip of today. Remember that ham tubers are human. Remember that this is a hobby for us. We spend a lot more money than we make from our channels. And we do this because it's fun. A sure way to make us stop doing this is making it not fun for us. That's just my bit of advice today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support you give me. Until next time. See you down the bands. See you in my next video. 7-3, guys.